However, we don't have to be content with our world having an all-white background. Instead, we can replace the default picture object with the new picture object of our own creation as shown in the image on the right-hand side of your screen. If the new picture object that you create isn't large enough to completely feel, fill the area inside the borders of the world object, it will be placed in the upper left corner of the world object. The remainder of the world object under those circumstances will be a light gray color. We can demonstrate this by running the program and manually resizing the world object to cause it to be larger than the picture object that it contains. You can see the result of doing this on the left hand side of your screen at this point. If your new picture object is too large to fit within the bounds of your, of your world object, an upper left rectangular portion of your picture object that is sufficient to fill the world object will be displayed. In that case, the remainder of the picture object will not be visible even if you manually resize the world object to make it larger. There are five overloaded constructors for the picture class in Barb Erickson's media library. Those five constructors are shown in the documentation on the right hand side of your screen. We will mainly use the first one, the third one, and the fifth one in the lessons in this series of lessons. The right hand portion of the last statement that you see here uses the last constructor that you see here to instantiate a new picture object. That picture object encapsulates the image contained in the image file named prob01.jpg. I see that that code disappeared from the screen so I'm going to pause here for just a second and I'm sorry I paused too quickly. I'm going to pause here for just a second and bring that code back so that you can see it. So since I messed that up so thoroughly, let me run through it again to make sure that you can understand it. The code that you see here on the bottom of your screen uses the last picture constructor to instantiate a new picture object. That new picture object encaps encapsulates the image that's contained in the file whose name is prob01.jpg. I was careful to use an image that was a little wider than my world object and exactly as tall as my world object. As you can see from the image on the right hand side of your screen, the image completely, fill, completely filled the world. The image that I'm talking about is the image with the penguin, the igloo, and the houses showing in the snow scene. The turtles and the colored lines are added later. Now take a look at the code on the right hand side of your screen. The expression that I am highlighting now instantiates a new picture object by calling the constructor for the picture class and passing the name of an image file as a parameter. That constructor returns a reference to the new picture object and that reference is passed as a parameter to the method named setPicture. SetPicture is a setter method of the world object which is referred to by the reference variable named 
Mars. Passing that picture object reference to the setter method of the world class causes the new picture containing the penguin, as you can see here, to replace the default all white picture that normally forms the background for the world object. Ericsson's picture class is a subclass, meaning that it extends the class named simple picture. Therefore, an object of the picture class encapsulates all of the methods that are defined in the picture class in addition to all of the methods that are defined in the simple picture class. In other words, all of the methods defined in the simple picture class are inherited into an object instantiated from the picture class. The simple picture class is a subclass of, meaning that it extends, the class named object. Therefore, an object instantiated from the picture class also inherits and encapsulates all of the methods defined in the object class. One of the methods that is defined in the simple picture class and inherited into the, into the picture class is a method named add message. The add message method requires three parameters. One is a reference to a string object or an object instantiated from the string class and the other two parameters are coordinate coordinate values of type int. The add message method draws the string as text characters onto the image at the location specified by the coordinate values. This is how I caused my name to appear in the upper left hand corner of the image that you see on the bottom right hand side of your screen. This is accomplished by the code in the in listing 6 on the top right side of your screen. The code in listing 6 uses two levels of indirection to add my name as a message to the picture that forms the background of the world as shown by the image on the bottom right hand side of your screen. You can see that again as my name in the upper left hand corner. The code in listing 6 goes to the variable named Mars to get a reference to the world object. Then it uses that reference to access the world object. Then the code in listing 6 calls the getter method named getPicture to get access to the picture object that is encapsulated in that world object. Having gained access to the picture object, listing 6 then calls the add message method belonging to the picture object passing my name as a string parameter along with a pair of coordinate values that specify a location near the upper left corner of the image. As a result, my name appears in the world as shown in figure 1 on the bottom right of your screen. Now let's turn our attention to the turtle class and objects that are instantiated from the turtle class. The turtle class extends the simple turtle class and the simple turtle class extends the object class. Therefore, an object instantiated from the turtle class encapsulates all of the methods defined in the turtle class, the simple turtle class, and the object class. 
a turtle object encapsulates many different methods. These methods can be used to manipulate the turtle in a variety of different ways. Some of those ways are illustrated by the series of statements that you see in the source code here on the upper left hand side of your screen. When a new turtle object is instantiated and added to a world object using the constructor that you see here on the bottom right of your screen, it doesn't have a name property value. Well, actually, it probably does. Its name property value is probably null. The turtle object initially appears in the center of the world, facing north with a default color. Every turtle object has a drawing pin attached to its belly. By default, the pin can draw a line one pixel wide in a default color each time the turtle moves. This line will track the or mark the movement of the turtle. That pin can be raised so that it won't draw a line or it can be lowered so that it will draw a line. Initially by default it is down and it will draw a line one pixel wide. The code in listing 7 on the upper right of your screen begins by calling the method named setName to set the name property of one of the turtles to the string value Joe. It is very important for you to understand that this name Joe is completely independent of the fact that the name of the reference variable that contains the reference to the turtle is a variable named Joe. The name of the variable and the name and the value of the name property are completely independent properties. In other words, that name property could have been set to Tom or Dick or Harry or any other string value that we wanted to choose. It is the value of the name property and not the name of the variable that refers to the turtle object that determines the text output that is shown in the lower right portion of your screen. 